fast from Instagram. If you're uh, a seasoned person, you might fast from Facebook. Come on, somebody, because you know that's where we at now. Just separate Facebook, Instagram. Just joking. I love everybody. Um, no, we want you to maybe you would make a decision to say, hey, I'm going to cut out uh, uh, beef and chicken. And I want you to feel free to modify if you feel necessary. But I am going to ask the members of TLC to the best of your ability um, to join us on the fast that has been laid out. Amen. So we'll send out a text about that. We're going to start that next Sunday. So you got a whole nother week to binge. All right. Whole nother week to get it in. Amen. Amen. Um, so we want to move into the word Proverbs 29 and 18. Proverbs 29 and 18. I mean, it reads like this in the NIV version, where there is no revelation. Somebody say revelation. Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. But blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction. Where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint. I want to pause right here and say this. Discipline is always most difficult when it's detached from a destination. Discipline is always most difficult when it is detached from a destination. If you, if you are not going somewhere, there is no reason to make sacrifices where you are. It's only when you have a clearer picture of where you're going that discipline in the present becomes worthwhile because you know it contributes to the promise in the future. And so for many of us, what we're going to be talking about now, now the reason you might be saying, well, what is Vernon talking about? Because this passage, this scripture that I just read is often most commonly heard in the King James Version. Uh, I want to read it for you. It says, where there is no vision, the people, all right, the people perish. Now, we're most used to hearing it that way. Where there is no vision, the people perish. And whenever we tend to talk about uh, this particular passage, we tend to talk about it from a corporate mentality, but not a personal one. So we talk about corporate vision, and we will as Vision Sunday approaches the fifth Sunday of this month. But one of the things that I wanted to spend a couple weeks talking about is your personal vision. I believe that the scripture is speaking to each one of us individually today. Where you have no vision, people perish. And more often than not, people don't give up in the promise. They give up in the present. People don't forfeit promises when they think about where they're going or where they're at. They, they forfeit promises in their present condition. And so with no vision, the people what? All right. And then it goes on to say in our translation that we read, but where there is no revelation, so vision and revelation can be used interchangeably. Where there is no revelation, you cast off restraint. Sacrifice is necessary to attain vision. And so as we start this new sermon series, some of y'all are like, what's the name of the sermon series? The sermon series is called this. I want you to announce it to your neighbor just so you can wake them up. It's the last time I'm going to tell you to talk to your neighbor uh, today. I want you to tell them your storyline. Say storyline. Your storyline matters. Your storyline matters. Throughout this series, we're going to talk about your storyline. We're going to talk about your vision because your storyline is impacted by your vision. Your storyline is impacted by your vision. Recently, I had a friend come to the house. Uh, I call him a friend. He's one of my frat brothers. He was a groomsman in my wedding. We are good friends. His name is Joshua Boone. He is an actor. He is not a play play actor. I, I'm, I'm proud of him. He's made some real strides in this thing. Um, you know, we all got friends who are actors, but they ain't really actors. You know, we got friends who are rappers. They ain't really rappers, you know, you know. You know, when I mean, you're in the creative arts, you know, you got to differentiate sometimes. You'd be like, you a photographer or you a photographer? Like, do you take pictures or do you take pictures? Like, do you get paid when you take pictures? Um, and so he's an actor. He's an actor. He's done some things. He's been on Law and Order SVU and my Law and Order SVU fans. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's been on Law and Order. He's been on Law and Order SVU and, 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 and he was the criminal. So I said, man, that's like the second most important role in the show. Like, that's a good deal. Um, you know, Benson arrested him and everything. I said, I'm proud of you. <laughs> most exciting arrest I've ever seen in my life. Uh, and so he was over the house uh, one night. He was staying with us, and, and Josh was uh, watching TV. And, you know, when you got friends, they come to your house, and they treat it like it's their house. And so he began to take over the TV, uh, you know, and I love him like that. So he began to say, Vernon, I want to watch the actor's table. I said, what in the world is the actor's table? I'm not an actor. I'm not familiar with this terminology. He said, it's this, it's this gathering of the most premier actors from the previous year. Basically, those who were the most celebrated, the most awarded, or, or had some of the best roles, they bring them around a table, generally about seven to eight of them, and they have a discussion about just their careers and their goals and how they go about their careers uh, in the present and both what they want to accomplish in the future. And Will Smith was sitting at the table. 
Will Smith was sitting at the table, and they asked Will. They asked Will. Samuel L. Jackson was a part of the conversation. He said, Will, how do you select the character? Will said, it's very simple for me. Uh, I always read part of the script. He said, I, I don't got time to read the whole script. I know some of y'all read the whole script. Will said, I don't read the whole script. I read the beginning of the character's identity in the end. He said, I'm not as much concerned about what happens throughout the entire script. What I'm more concerned about is where they start and where they finish. What helps me select a character, he said, is knowing that the destination is worthwhile. If the story is worth telling, I will endure the scenes that are not ideal because I know that the end of the story is worth telling. Okay, let me help three of y'all over here because only they clap. <laughs> they was like, good for me. I don't get what you're saying. All right. I wonder how many of our lives would be more inspired, more motivated, more passionate if we knew the end of the story. If we knew that, that all that we were dealing with in the present was not the finish, but that God still was writing something. And this, this, this technical term for this, some of you might have heard me speak on it before. It's a technical term in the, the theater world called the character arc. The character arc. It is the storyline of every character. Every character starts somewhere and they end somewhere. For some of our favorite characters, if, if you look at where they started and ended, I, I remember watching the Titanic for the first time. I, I felt bad because of the way the story ended. But the storyline kept me going. I didn't know what was going to happen. And, and as long as you know where the story is going, you can be inspired. I, I, the, the beautiful part about being in God's will is he's promised us an ending that has a, a, a joy attached to it. He's promised us an ending that has hope attached to it. He's promised us an ending that has freedom attached to it. So the only question is not is what waiting for us worthwhile. The only question is can I endure the present storyline? This is the journey that we will take over the next few weeks is what is my storyline? Can I endure the storyline? Because many of us are in one of two places. Either you're creating your story or you're enduring it. You're either creating your story or you're enduring one. And too often, I think one of the challenges of even the church is that we come and experience or hear promises that we never see manifested in our life. And we say, Vernon, how is it that God has a desire for my story and I'm not experiencing it in our life? I think that what God says many of us are missing is not a desire but a vision. Somebody say vision. Without vision, people perish. I want to read one more passage to you. It's in Proverbs 23, 7. King James Version says it like this. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Now note you, he doesn't say for as a man thinketh in his mind. Because all of us can testify to the fact that there's some things that our mind took in, but our heart never internalized. And it's real hard to make mind decisions more. But, but, but when you have your heart connected to a decision, we will make some crazy decisions when our heart is attached to them. We will pay people's bills off when our heart is attached to them. Come on. We'll be like, I got, I'll take care of that for you. Take care of that for you. We will make sacrifices for people that are unbelievable when our heart is attached to them. We will make sacrifices for ourselves when our heart is attached to a vision. And, and some of us, I believe, this passage is going to change our lives today because we've been pursuing things with our mind, but we've never attached our heart. What is your vision? He said, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. It's in this tension that Andy Stanley says something that is very important that's going to set the tone for our year. I believe that if you internalize this quote right here, it will change the way you live your life this year. You will say, I came to church one day and it changed the way I thought about my life. Here's the quote. Andy Stanley says, everyone ends up somewhere. Few people end up there on purpose. Everyone ends up somewhere. Few people end up there on purpose. 
And if you watch the video that I sent out, I, I begin to elaborate on this. Where did you end up at the end of 2016? And did you end up there on purpose or on accident? Did you look at your bank account and be like, how did I end up there? I mean, what did I buy? <laughs> like, I made that much. I didn't see that much. Where, where did my marriage end up? Where did my relationship end up? Did I end up there on purpose or on accident? Did, I, did, did my life, did I just endure the story? Or am I going to be intentional about creating the story this year? What decisions will I make? What hope will I give? And vision comes in five areas. If you didn't watch the video, I want to catch everybody up. Vision comes in five areas. Everybody say five areas. Five areas. I want to give you the five areas today. The first place that vision impacts our lives is inspiration. You got to be inspired to do something. You cannot have a passionless vision. It doesn't exist. So what am I inspired to do? What breaks my heart? What am I excited about? What would I do for free? What, what You don't got to pay me, but I wake up thinking about it. What am I inspired to do and become? After inspiration comes conviction. This is where things go from your mind to your heart. This is when you make up in your, your, your decision-making process that this is not just a good idea up here. It's something that I can't let go of in here. And all too often, we pursue things up here. This is why many of us go to college, come on, tell the truth, shame the devil, and you change your major 15 times because you did something with the bank account in mind but not your heart in mind. And so now you got to go back to your parents and be like, look, I really don't love this. And they be like, oh, well. <laughs> did you hear the salary <laughs> starting at? My, my mind is there, but my heart is not there. It makes sense, but it's not where my heart is. Conviction. Inspiration leads to conviction. Conviction leads to action. Catch this. You are in a dangerous place when you start acting on things that your heart is not connected to yet. And so we spend our lives trying to figure out why we start and stop everything. Why can I not sustain an idea? Why can I not sustain a new endeavor? Why can I not sustain a sport? Why can I not sustain a fitness habit? Why can I not sustain a relationship ideal? Because you made a decision in your mind, but you never made it in your heart. As a man thinketh in his what? So is he. So before I start acting, let me make sure I'm convicted about this thing. I need conviction. Inspiration leads to conviction. Conviction leads to action. Action leads to determination. Because here's where many of us fall. This is where the people perish. The people don't perish in the act of starting. They perish in the act of sustaining. I had an idea. I was inspired. And you know what? This is right. This is what I got to do. Act on it. And then life happens. And the people start perishing in this place because it takes determination to endure the scene of the story that you don't like. Just because you don't like the scene don't mean you can quit on the story. And I'm trying to help 15 people today. Maybe how many of y'all is in here? Maybe, maybe 35 might catch it. You cannot live your life starting and stopping based on the scene. Or you will never see vision manifest. Your sacrifice is going to take more than a month. But if you are dedicated and you are determined, you will see, watch this, completion. That's the final step of vision. Completion, completion. Somebody say, I'm going to complete something. Now, it's important that we understand vision. I talked about all this on the video. If you want to catch up on that, you can check the video. But here's where it takes a turn. Here's where it takes a turn. Because the right mentality must be connected to vision for you to sustain. You got to have the right mentality. Mentality is defined. Mentality is defined as a mental power or capacity. Somebody say capacity. Where that hula hoop at? Go get me that hula hoop for me. Uh, um, it's important. Can I get three? I need three people. I need three people. Just to come on up here. You, you, I appreciate you. You come on up. You come on up. I need one more person. Aaron, you can't fit. Um, yeah, come here, Allie. Come here, Allie. Yeah, capacity. Somebody say capacity one more time. Capacity. See, see, we have to understand that now that I have a vision, I got a plan. I'm, I'm going to do something. I'm going to go somewhere. 
You have to apply your mentality to it. And mental mentality is my capacity. My capacity is important because the way the mind works is it's always storing information, but it doesn't choose to release information unless you do. And so what happens is, come on, get on in here. As long as I have the capacity to keep growing, I'm good. Uh, Crystal, can you just come here for a second? I think, I think you might can get on in here. Come on into the circle. Yeah, yeah. I, have, I have capacity still. I have capacity. And see, and when, you're, when you have a right mentality, when, when you have vision, when you know that I am now attaching a certain thought process to the vision... Watch this. You can start, you can still move places. You can still go. But the problem is the more you add to it, uh, uh, Brandon, can you just come here? I don't want to mess up your head. I know it's AKA day and all that. Uh, <laughs> I know it's AKA day. Don't, don't touch the curls. I, we, and, and there's how life really works, y'all. Life continues to add to our capacity. The problem is many of us now are trying to pursue God. We're trying to go somewhere new. God is trying to lead us. But at some point, it becomes appropriate to release certain things and release certain thoughts. I know your mama told you this. I know your grandmama told you to think like this. I know that's how your cousins spend money. I know everybody goes out and spends all their money at the bar. And you're trying to change your life, but you haven't changed the capacity. You have no availability for God to enter in new thought. You keep saying, God, change my life. God said, I got to change your capacity first. So what I got to do is there's some things, there's some things that you got to release in order for me to introduce a new way of thinking. There's some that, yeah, I know in your last relationship uh, it was dysfunctional, but now it's time for you to release the thought and say, Brittany, come here real quick. I want to introduce you to a mentor. Watch this. Not a relationship. Oh, my God. I missed it. They missed it. It went over their head. I want to introduce you to a mentorship before a relationship because maybe before you jump back into acting on a new relationship, I want to give you a new idea of what a relationship looks like. So now that you got a mentorship, now you can go with God some places because you made room for me in your capacity. Somebody say mentality. So sometimes we got to get rid of spending habits because, you know, we just love to shop. We just got to have it. But, but, but every now and then, God says, I want to release some old ways of thinking and some old ways of doing things so I, you can make room. Because even if you have a great vision, if you don't have the right mentality attached to it, the people will. Come on, make some noise if you're not going to perish this year. Come on, get that on out. Take it over there. It's important that if you're going to stay determined, that you approach life and your vision with the right mentality, the right mentality. And so, and so here it is. We find this scripture that, that, that God, I believe, is dropping in our spirits today to say, what are you going to do this year? Are you going to end up somewhere on purpose or are you going to end up there on accident? Are you going to end up where you designed yourself to be at the beginning of this year? Because your vision will always be limited or liberated by your capacity. And so here we are now trying to walk into the next season. Over these next few weeks, we're going to talk about four layers of vision. We're going to talk about mentality today. We talked about that a little bit. But, but then after you have the right mentality, you have to be in motion. Somebody say motion. Okay, now this is key. This is key. Uh, uh, Bree, can you come here real quick? I, I wanted to do this. I knew somebody was going to have a camera. Bring your camera for me, please. One of the things they were teaching me about cameras is, is that what's more important than the actual camera is the lens. It's important that, that you understand. I'm not going to drop it, I promise, because I can't afford to fix it. Yeah, I knew you were thinking about it. I got you. I've been working this arm out all week. Bicep curls. I'm good. <laughs> Just this arm. like. So, so they were telling me that more important than the camera is the lens. Because cause once you approach your life with the right mentality, it is important then that you set some things in motion. There is no more... I believe this with all my heart. The, the greatest tragedy of the kingdom right now, collectively, is that the, the, the majority of people who are in motion are not in the kingdom. Because, because we, we are the people who lack the most faith, but we come to church every Sunday to sing about a God 
but don't believe that he can do anything in our lives. And so we, we find ourselves continuing to sing, jump, and dance about the same stuff. I don't know about y'all, at, tw- at, the, at New Year's Eve 2017, going into 2018, I don't want to be shouting because I'm coming out of something bad. I want to be shouting because I saw God do all the stuff good. And I got some accountability in that. I got to set some things in motion. God will meet you in motion. Catch it. God will meet you where? In motion. And so, so they were talking to me about the lenses, and they were saying that, you know, you can have the same camera, but if you don't have the right lens, you can't capture motion. They were, they were explaining to me, go ahead, just open it, take a picture real quick. Just take a picture. Yeah, take a picture. Look, they look cute. Take a picture. Let me see. That's cute. They'll get them about 80 likes. They ain't going to get 100 likes off of that, though. We'll talk about it later. Yeah, double tap. I'll do a, pit. I'll do a, I'll do a tap for y'all. It's, it's important. We start to think about this because when you take pictures of your life, if you're not careful, you'll have the wrong lens. All too often in church, we come for God to take still pictures. So we say, God, look at me. But we're standing still. We're not pursuing anything new. Many of us, we walked into 2017 and have made no goals for our marriage. We've made no goals for our finances. We've made no goals for our life as a whole. We, 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 we know we've got resolutions. You know, we posted stuff. But I'm talking about we aren't ready to move into motion. And God meets us in motion. And here's the danger. You will find yourself constantly coming to God saying, God, how do I look? But if you ever understood, one of the things that's important is you, you let go of the lens. God is trying to apply a different lens to your life. And, and, and if you change the lens, I don't know if this lens will do it. It can start to capture things in motion. Every lens can't capture things moving. So if you continue to look at your life through your lens, you won't be able to see what God is doing. Watch this, because God is moving at a pace that your lens does not have the capacity to see yet. But if you ever get into your word and start fasting just a little bit and start praying just a little bit and start being consistent in how I invest into the kingdom and start saying, God, I'm going to do more than just baseline. I'm going to give you all of me. I'm going to jump all in this year. God says, I would apply a different lens to what is happening in your present and you won't perish because you'll be able to see the motion. You'll be able to see the motion. Thank you. You got to. Apply a different lens. It's, 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 it's not that God is not moving. It's just that your lens is not capable of seeing what he's doing. How many of us can testify that the truth is there's some things that we were complaining to God about. And then when that season was over, we was like, thank God he was moving. I couldn't see it, but he was moving some people out. He was moving some stuff in. He was moving some doors open. He was moving some things up. There were some ceilings that had to break. There were some things that had to change. And he was moving, but I just didn't have a lens that could put it in perspective. This is where God is is challenging us this year. He's challenging us to get into motion. God is saying, if you're going to be the visionaries that I've called you to be, not just corporately, but independently, personally, God has a vision for every one of our lives. He said, I want you to achieve it, but you have to be willing, watch this, to have some type of discipline. Now, let's go back to the initial quote, because discipline detached from a destination is the most difficult kind. So, God, I see where I'm going. Now, and I can make decisions based on my destination. The the greater the focus of your vision, the fewer your options. And you will start to say, okay, God, I see what you are doing and how you are moving in my life. Here's the last thing. You got to catch this. You got to catch this. Because men, by James Allen, he says this quote, men are anxious to improve their circumstances, but unwilling to improve themselves. Therefore, they remain bound. Say it one more time. Somebody screenshot that. Tag me. Men are anxious and women are anxious to improve their circumstances, but are unwilling to improve themselves. Therefore, they remain bound. 
my, my prayer for this word is quite simple, that when you leave this room, that you'll start to look at the categories of vision and say, where am I? Some of you are saying, I, I'm not inspired yet, and so you got to find your inspiration. For some of you, you're saying, I've been acting on some things that my heart is not connected to, so i got to find my conviction. For some of you, you're saying, i gotta, I got I to gotta start acting. i got to put something in motion. For some of you, you say, hey, I gave up last year on something, but i got to get my determination back so that I don't perish because I have a vision. I'm just allowing it to perish in the present. But then I think... I think when you apply the right mentality to the right vision, that's when you get the measure of your completion. I think God wants us to complete some things this year. He doesn't just want you to start some stuff. He wants you to sustain some stuff. He wants you to go for it. He wants you to, to believe in you. It's so interesting. I, I didn't plan to go here, but I'm going to reference this scripture, and I want you to check it out. It's Joshua. It's Joshua, and it is when they send out the scouts to look at the promised land. And, and Joshua and his team, they go out to scout the promised land, and they come back with a report. And, and, and when they make the report, they say, uh, we look like grasshoppers in our own eyes and theirs. Catch what he says. We look like grasshoppers in our own sight and theirs. Did you catch it? Your ability to fulfill the promise that God has placed in your heart is directly connected to your ability to see yourself as qualified, as able, as capable, as wonderful enough, as purposed enough. It's how you see yourself because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. God is trying to restore identity this year. Your identity has been limited. Your worth has been limited. The wealth of who you are has been limited by how you see yourself. And so the vision is there, but the mentality isn't. God said, it's time for us to get back to being a people that has vision. God wants the kingdom to be full of people with vision. Somebody say vision. And so if you would do me a favor, stand up on your feet all across the room. I want to pray today that God... Re